Hello, Pat O'Melia here with The City Show. We do this because I know you're watching. We like to inform you, educate you, entertain you a little bit. Speaking of entertainment, we had the Oscars. Um, everything, everywhere, all at once pretty much took all the awards. I didn't see it. I'm a big movie goer. I like to still go to the theaters. Um, so I looked into it. It did $108 million total. Uh, box office, and uh, not knocking it because 100 million is still a pretty good num number. But when you have Avatar: The Way of the Water, Top Gun Maverick, uh, Wakanda Forever, each of those movies were past a billion. I think that Avatar did two billion, uh, Top Gun billion and a half, something like that, and they basically got zip. See, it'll be interesting to see the ratings for this show because I think one of the problems you have is these obscure movies win. Now, I was happy to see Brendan Fraser win for The Whale, uh, another basically obscure movie that, you know, it's, I don't even think it had box office. Um, I always liked Brendan Fraser going back to the days of The Mummy and all. Uh, happy to see him win when it looked like his career was uh, over. Now he's back with an Oscar. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis, you know, we kind of grew up with Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, I would like to see the Marvel franchise get some love with some of these. Angela Bassett, she didn't win. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis, but either one was a, would have been a fine uh, uh, recipient of the Oscar. Um, it'll be interesting to see the ratings for this when it comes out, uh, to find out just how well this did. Because, you know, it, you, you go to these movies, you would like to see the movies that you've seen win. And when you have a movie that, you know, does like $100 million, Globally, not a lot of people have seen that. But like I said, I was happy to see Brendan Fraser win. Uh, you know, I was always a fan of his. Uh, today, our topics. We got uh, weed shops in Jersey City. A lot of weed shops in Jersey City. 7% uh, proposed tax increase in Hoboken. And we got quick hits. We got Angela McKnight. We got a 30% tax increase over the last few years in Jersey City. We'll talk about who paid for the secret Paris trip. And daylight savings, all that and more when I come back. You're watching The City Show. We'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. If you need to see a doctor, RWJ Barnabas Health has two easy ways to do it from anywhere. You can see an urgent care provider 24-7 on any device with our Telemed app. Or use our website to book a virtual visit with an RWJ Barnabas Health Medical Group provider or specialist, even as a new patient. You've taken every precaution, and so have we. So don't delay your care any longer. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together. We're back. City Show here. Yeah, you got to give the Marvel Universe, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, some love there. You know, Endgame, Infinity War, you know, they did like $2 billion there. Nada. Maybe some special effects. For that matter, I think uh, Wakanda went for special effects. That was it. Nothing else for a movie that did over a billion dollars. All right, weed shops in Jersey City. Also, broke my glasses um, writing this show today. Uh, weed shops in Jersey City. There is the potential to have eight weed shops. In Jersey City, these are my spares for my car. On Central Avenue, eight weed shops. And I don't mean the length of Central, which is now, you know, up past the courthouse uh, on Newark Avenue now, all the way to uh, Union City. No, we're talking eight from Griffith Street to like Congress Street. 
eight weed shops. I'm not against weed shops, but putting them eight there within, which basically just a few blocks isn't good planning. Uh, that may be hard to believe that Jersey City doesn't have good planning. And also, you know, we, we kind of kind of, I think you need to streamline this a little bit, but there has to be more oversight to these weed shops. So I think there's like four levels of bureaucracy you got to get through from the county to the cannabis board to the state of New Jersey to the planning board. You could do some streamlining, but what the city needs to do, we need to save these entrepreneurs from themselves. I don't care what kind of business you're talking about. If you're going to put eight of them within just a few blocks, like I said, from Griffith Street to Congress Street, they're going to fail. You could put eight McDonald's on Central Avenue, and four or six of them would fail because there's just, just too many of the same thing. And like I said, yeah, we, we, we need to protect these entrepreneurs from themselves. You know, at one time on Central Avenue, we used to have a lot of dollar stores. Not a lot of dollar stores anymore. You know, yeah. Now you now you got like two of them, but at one time there were dollar stores all over the place. Um, we the city we the city of Jersey City. We need to protect these entrepreneurs from themselves. Or it, it, it would be a lot of competition. Maybe that drives down the price of the weed, but it'll also drive out some of the businesses. And not only do we need to protect these entrepreneurs, uh, we need to protect the beneficiaries of these um, weed shops, because almost every one of these, well, ev actually every one of these weed shops has made some commitment um, to the municipalities, uh, not-for-profit organizations, uh, civic association, shelters, whatever the case is. All these, you know, needy, uh, well-run uh, organizations, um, you know, sort of respectable organizations in Jersey City that are all trying to uh, make our city and our community better. They're, they're all promised some sort of revenue or jobs in the area, we'll hire local, that sort of thing. Uh, percentage of the revenue would be donated to shelters or not-for-profits. And when one of these weed stores, especially when you have eight of them in a very small area, uh, there will be failures. And not only is the entrepreneur hurt because they're putting in a lot of money, uh, investments, you know, small business is very difficult. Uh, these beneficiaries get hurt also. You know, now there's no 2% of the revenue or whatever jobs or sponsorships, or whatever that is, because when the business starts going bad, those are the first things you cut. And when the business closes, there's no revenue to uh, give a percentage of. So what the city needs to do is rethink how we're doing these cannabis. I, I put a whole to them note right now. Everything stops. As Governor Murphy says, full stop. Um, first off, 600 feet probably isn't a good distance from each one of these stores. Uh, I, I would try to regulate it better that we don't have such a heavy concentration of weed shops in one area as we're predicting here on Central Avenue, eight of them. Uh, and also, the city would probably behoove everyone, instead of having each one of these individual weed shops make whatever donations, commitments, sponsorships to various organizations in the surrounding area of that weed shop, um, because some will fail. Instead of them guaranteeing money to that those particular organizations, the city should set up some sort of like a community chest where all the weed shops donate into this one central account, and from there, it's distributed. Because when a weed shop fails, and there will be failures in the weed shops, um, these civic associations and not-for-profits and shelters and so forth, you know, they're, they're, they're not out. You know, they, they, it's not a case where we have backed the wrong pony here. It's not, that shouldn't be it. We should have one community chest where, you know, we can have uh, representatives from the weed stores or the representatives from the various um, not-for-profits and civic organizations where they would distri distribute the monies. But, again, we need to limit the amount of weed shops to uh, help as much as we can this, these businesses being successful and, two, not hurting 
the beneficiaries of these weed shops. In this case, I think employees who are going to be hired locally, you know, whoever's getting donations or sponsorships from these uh, weed shops, so they're not hurt. We, we need to put a little more thought into this. And I think somebody made the comment what they're doing, they're flying a plane as they're building it. There might have been the BA uh, Metro who said that. We shouldn't be operating that way. This should have been thought out better. But, you know, experience is a great teacher. As this goes on, you're starting to realize the problems. But right now, halt and figure out how to distribute these uh, generous donations from these various weed entrepreneurs. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. We'll be right back. I've got cancer. We've got the highest level of cancer care. The latest clinical trials. Researchers working to find a cure. And there's navigators to guide you every step of the way. At New Jersey's only NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, your safety has always been our top priority. I've got cancer, but I also have peace of mind. Jersey City Medical Center and Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Let's beat cancer together. Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Jersey City Ford, certified parts and service located at Route 440 and Communipaw Ave is your number one source for Ford and Lincoln automotive needs. We use certified Ford Motocraft products to keep your Ford running in top shape. Motocraft parts are backed with the Ford warranty which includes a two-year unlimited mileage guarantee. Our team will have the right Motocraft part to ensure the best performance from your Ford or Lincoln. You can order in person at the parts counter or online. Let us help keep your Ford or Lincoln in the best shape at Stevens Jersey City Ford. We're back to the show here. We did weed shop. Now we're going to talk about tax increases. Hope oh, these glasses feel so small. These are my reading glasses from the car. Um, Hoboken is proposing, I think their budget is like $150 million, which is pretty reasonable. When you look at Jersey City, it's like, it's like $665 million. But uh, it's only a little more than a mile square city. Um, they're proposing a 7% tax increase. That's a big effing tax increase. We're not talking one, two percent here, you know, like a cost of living adjustment. Seven percent. And they listed a bunch of reasons why. Uh, uh, new water mains and uh, water senses, Union Dry Dock purchasing that, a new park on the Northwest, uh, 10 car charging stations, the hiring of two social workers and additional employees for the housing authority. Um, I got some questions. First off, we have to try to start making these municipalities more affordable. Not just Hoboken, Jersey City, too. Uh, for, the, for the large part, Hoboken and Jersey City, they are one and two with the most expensive rents in the nation. So, yes, there is a need to try to get these cities more affordable because not everybody can afford the rents that they're charging. And I think Jersey City, I think their average is like five grand. Same thing with Hoboken, it's like $5,000 a month rent. Here's my question with the 7% increases. Well, there is taxes that are paid, and the city is supposed to manage their funds with the amount of money with taxes and, you know, ticket revenue and parking meters and licensing fees and permits, all that, all that money comes in. And whatever rentals they have, the water mains and... Water pressure sensors. Shouldn't that be Suez or whatever, the uh, Viola, the, the new name of Suez? Shouldn't that be their job? Aren't they collecting a large amount of money from the people of Hoboken and water fees? Shouldn't they be budgeting money from that to do these upgrades? Just a thought. Union Dry Dock. If you can't afford to buy this land, mostly usually bond for this, not raise taxes to pay for that. Maybe you shouldn't buy the land. For that matter, you're renting the land right now, so I'm not even sure what the 7% has to do with Union Dry Dock. And if you want to build parks, that's fine. Can you afford to do it within your existing budget? That's the trick of being a good mayor and a good council. Ten car charging stations. 
I don't understand how that becomes a requirement of and a responsibility of a municipality to put car charging stations in. Did the municipality open any gas stations? No. That's going to be something from the private sector. Private sector will step in when there's a real need for charging stations. Believe me, entrepreneurs, like we were talking earlier, there's eight entrepreneurs who want to open weed stores in, uh, on Central Avenue. There will be entrepreneurs who will invest in these charging stations. Probably it should be the uh, purvy of um, PSE and G who's in the electric business where they can charge a rate on that. Uh, I'm not sure the, the municipalities should be involved in this. Um, social workers, as I spoke many a times, we should do shared services. Well, here's a case where they hired two social workers. We hired them and basically telling you we can't afford them. We have to raise your taxes 7%. Uh, the county of Hudson has social workers. The people of Hoboken are already paying for social workers in their county taxes. So why are we just having the county do this? And I go back to what I said before in many shows, shared services. And we were talking about the DPW garage they want to build. Why do you need a $90 million DPW garage? when you're boarded by Union City, Jersey City, and Weehawken, and the County of Hudson. And guess what all four of those entities have? DPWs. So it, it, it behooves Hoboken to start looking at ways to reduce the cost to the property owners and the renters in Hoboken, instead of just jacking up things with these reasons which don't take trans don't stand up to transparency. Uh, it's time to figure out how to make Hoboken more affordable. You just can't keep, you know, raising the the taxes here. Like I said, they're either number one or number two on the highest rents in the nation. And any council rep who votes for any, you know, they're, they're seven percent, so they'll they'll get it down to like five percent, maybe, maybe not. Uh, any council person who votes for this increase should be voted out in the next cycle. And I think the next cycle is all the ward uh, council reps. So you'll have your chance, Hoboken. Anybody who votes for this is basically saying, we don't care how expensive Hoboken is. We'll make it more expensive. So the anybody who was born and raised in Hoboken won't be able to afford that. Eventually, even if you're sitting on good property, it'll get so damn expensive there, you'll be forced to sell that property because you won't be able to afford it anymore. You're gonna, I, I, gotta, I gotta get out of here, I can't afford this. And when the property taxes go up, rents go up, and everything is connected to that. You know, your cost of living in Hoboken, your home budget is, 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 is mandated on your rent. Your cost of living in the town, everything from, you know, you raise the property taxes, the luncheonette where you get your coffee has rent is raised. So they got to turn around and change the price of uh, the coffee and increase that. Everything is relative. Everything is related. So the more you just sit here and jack up the taxes, the more unaffordable Hoboken gets. And maybe if they keep doing this, they become the number one highest rent in the nation. It won't be going back and forth with Jersey City. Again, that's ridiculous. All right, we're going to break the commercial. You're watching The City Show. We'll be right back. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. Jersey City Medical Center has a passion for heart health. We're Hudson County's only full-service heart hospital. With innovative technologies and premier cardiovascular physicians, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements and nationally renowned care for every heart in every community. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Jersey City Medical Center. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. 
with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, Light Rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one pass stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. Tall screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you. Newport. Live like you want. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. We're back, Pat O'Malley here with my ever-present coffee and a styrofoam cup, by the way. Quick hits. Angela McKnight, as I predicted last week, we'll get got the nod to replace Sandra Cunningham as the state senator in the 31st district. Oh, I did not predict that. I was talking about Denise Ridley, who, as of last week, was the leader in the in the uh, the list of people to replace Sandra Cunningham. Um, turns out, Angela McKnight. What you know? What makes sense. It's a natural progression of things. You know, Angela's been a, an assembly woman. Uh, I guess she's got, I guess she's in there at least three terms, maybe four. I should have checked that before I got here, but she's been there a while. So that makes sense to me. Now, Ridley, Denise Ridley, Ward A councilman in Jersey, councilwoman in Jersey City, would have done a great job. Smart kid, her day will come. But like I, like I texted her last week, I said, you know, at least you still got Ward A. Uh, but Angela, she'll do a fine job there. Natural progression. That was originally who everybody thought was going to move up. What's surprising is who replaces uh, Angela McKnight in the assembly. It's Barbara Stramato. You may know her better as Barbara McCann, the uh, sister of the former mayor of Jersey City. I've known Barbara, I don't know, about 30 years now. I think she'll be a tremendous assembly person. I, I came out of left field. Nobody was even mentioning her name, but you know, none of us were focusing on who would be the eventual uh, assembly person. So congratulations to both. I know both of them would do a tremendous job in Trenton for all of us. And, um, you know, both of them in Bay Bayonne and Jersey City. All of Bayonne is covered by the 31st District, and a part of Jersey City is. Um, it's been reported that Jersey City, over the last couple of years, has um, had its taxes go up approximately 30%, something like 33%, I think they, they mentioned. Um, this was talked about on NJ.com, not NJ.com, NJ 101.5, uh, about a 33% increase over the last few years. You know, there has been an increase, and most of that is contributed to the Jersey City Board of Education, which we have discussed on this show many, 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 many times. Uh, and we're, we're looking at a billion dollar budget coming out as soon as they do these numbers. And they already said, we're going to try to do a, you know, a reasonable budget. There's no reasonable budget with these people. We will look at a billion dollar budget and there'll be more tax increases. As I said earlier about Hoboken, the same thing applies in Jersey city. We have got to figure out how to make Jersey city more affordable and kudos to mayor Fuller. You know, he's not running around putting any 7% increases in but he doesn't control the Jersey City Board of Ed, which he should by going to an appointed board. Uh, that's the only way the city will have say and sway with the Jersey City Board of Education. Right now, it's basically run by the uh, union. Well, like I said, in the 30%, and you know, they, we've talked about it, you know, I think the taxes this year, because Mayor Fuller couldn't cover the Jersey City Board of Increase tax from a year ago, was about $2,400. So, yeah, 30% is right about in that number. But, you know, at the, if it's 33%, 30%, you can attribute directly to the Jersey City Board of Ed. And we've got to get a handle on that because as much, and again, kudos to Mayor Fulop 
and the city council trying to control the cost of living here in Jersey City. And we're still, either, like I said before, we're either jockeying with Hoboken to a number one or number two for the most expensive place in the nation to rent. So we, we need to put some serious thought on how to make this affordable. But kudos to uh, the mayor and the city council for holding a line on property taxes, their portion. There's three parts of that bill. There's the municipal, there's the school, and there's the county taxes. And then there's, you know, open space here and those all those Penny taxes, when you know it's only kind of half a percent or one percent, well, they all add up, and that becomes a, a bit of a bite. The Paris, the secret trip to Paris, that wasn't very secret because most of the guys, like uh, the reporters I produced television shows in the studio for, we all knew where Mayor Fulop was. He was in um, France, he was on a trip concerning the Pompidou um, uh, Museum that is slated for Journal Square at the old PSG building. Um, turned out the trip was paid for, as Mayor Phillips said, there was no taxpayer money used. The trip was paid for by the not-for-profit arm of the Jersey City Redevelopment Agency um, that is funded basically through uh, donations from various developers, for the most part developers. There are other people involved also who made donations. And um, this was the funds that were used for the Pompidou trip to uh, Paris. Now, it makes sense that developers would be involved because any developer on Journal Square, they got skin in the game. They want to see Pompidou be successful. I think it's not going to be successful. I think this is going to be one hell of a boondoggle. Uh, but we'll see how that works out. We covered this before. You know, that Mayor Fulop, he, he's got to try to appease the entire city. He wants to put some jewelry in Jersey City, and the Pompidou Museum would be jewelry for Jersey City. We'll see how that goes. I do not have high hopes of that. Daylight savings times just occurred. And as a person of some age, uh, if you remember the old days when that occurred, that was a job trying to set all the clocks in your house, especially if you try to get them all synchronized. You know, you need like Russian spies to get all the clocks synchronized in the old days. Now they're, they're all on Wi-Fi. They set themselves and maybe you set your watch. Even this watch I'm wearing set itself. I don't understand what the big deal about daylight savings. I don't care if we keep it or we don't. It has no effect on me. You know, people are talking about there's accidents on the highway after daylight savings time because people aren't used to driving it in the dark in the morning. Well, you're driving in the dark at night. How different could it be? And you lose an hour of sleep? It was no effect to me. It never had an effect to me. So it's basically, come on, people. If you, No excuses there. And all the years I've been managing businesses, when the clocks go ahead... I've never seen a person come in early. Now, when the clocks go back, people will come in late many of times. All right, we're out of show. You be good, you be safe. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.